you can't have my cornbread, that's for damn sure. Because if you try to take my cornbread, part two of my killing spree gonna begin up in here on your ass right now. If you think about my cornbread, they get the taste out your mouth, that's for damn sure. Now fuck him, fuck that, because I'm from New York City, goddammit. Nobody take no cornbread from me. And that goes for you and any other you motherfucking farmers wanna try some shit. You fuck around with me, it's gonna be consequences and Yo, yo, what's happening? What's happening? Maestro Styles, Trey Frazier. Welcome to another episode of the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast on barbershopsportstalkpodcast.com. Uh, real quick information, you can follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. You can follow me at Maestro Styles, Trey at Trey Frazier on Twitter. You can follow me at Maestro Styles. You can follow Trey on Twitter at Barbershop SPOR2. Make sure you like the Facebook page and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Trey, what's going on, man? Uh, chilling, man. It's another week, another dollar, man. Um, can't wait to get this show started. Uh, we got everything uh, to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just want to give a quick shout out to all the protesters that are still out in the streets protesting. Uh, black people, white people out there, you know, still repping for the cause, Black Lives Matter. Um, in particular, though, um, there are several people that's been out in the streets peacefully pro- protesting that have been getting shot by these rubber bullets mm-hmm. from these police. Yeah. And I'm seeing a lot of pictures online where guys and girls are just taking wounds to the legs, uh, to the face, to the eye. Like, you know, people been blinded by these mm-hmm. uh, bullet, these rubber bullets and things like that. And one girl, I saw this on that. Twitter earlier today, um, she posted pictures on how, like, like underneath her breasts, like, she got popped real good, and, like, the whole thing was red. And I'm like, yo, like, mm. them, them rubber bullets ain't no joke, man. Nah. But uh, them things ain't no joke, B. But, but I just want to give those people a shout-out and, and really thank you. Thank you for, you know, risking, you know, your, your livelihoods to get out there and march and protest and... You know, you know, take those bullets and, you know, rep for the cause, because I I certainly in my lifestyle right now, I I can't be out in the streets. So, you know, if any of them going to do it, then it's much appreciated. So just wanted to give them a shout out. Facts, facts. I uh, second your second your thoughts and uh, feelings. And uh, let me reiterate that the killers of Breonna Taylor are still not prosecuted. Ahmaud Arbery, shouts out to uh, George Floyd and all of the other uh, people we've lost uh, to police brutality and social injustice. Um, yes, we can get straight. We can get straight into it, man. Um, the 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 Redskins have officially uh, deaded that name, the Redskins. Uh, yep. I know we spoke briefly about it. Uh, when well, I briefly we spoke about it last week about what you know how we were feeling and what names we were lacked. Um, I, I I thought it's fake. I, I come to find out it's fake news, but I but I hear that they are sold on the Warriors. No, no, no. Let me take that back. Let me take that back. What I heard was is that the copyright infringement issue that we were hearing about, um, mm-hmm. it was for the Warriors, but people are, but it looks like they're leaning towards the Red Wolves. That's the rumor that I uh, heard today. Ugh. For me, it can't be nothing other than red tails. I agree, man. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm disappointed with what I found out earlier today. So there's this guy based out of Alexandria, Virginia, who's got all these trademarks 
to potential names for, you know, the former Redskins football team. Like he's got Red Tails already trademarked. He's got veterans, monuments. He's got Washington Tribe. Uh, red and, and it looks like he's got red wolves according to this um, picture that I got here it's it's a list of all the trademarks that this dude has filed for with the US patent office he's got Washington Potomacs red tailed Hawks radskins not redskins radskins with an a mm-hmm. uh, freedom fighters uh Braves professional football team and renegades. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if this is a way for this guy to maybe get some money off of these guys, because that's exactly what's going to happen. And which, by the way, that's genius. It is, it is. Yeah, it's, that, it's, that's, that's sound business, so I, I it, can't say I'm mad at the dude. It, it's, cer- it's certainly business, um, and obviously he had to you know shoot a shot, because you're not going to just get one trademark and then just hope that, that's the name that they want to choose. You definitely got to shoot 12 shots just to, you know, have a chance. Um, well, more for me, it's still red I think, I think he had an inside track. He might have had an inside track to what the names might have, you know, might be, you know, what the opinions were of what the name should be. And he, started, and he started getting that shit trademarked. That's and true. all you got to do true. is have the money to, to get each individual name trademarked. And now you're talking about a quick come up. Man, I tell you what, the the more I look at this, the more like I just shake my head and just kind of disappointment because if if we was that innovative to just get ahead of the curve with stuff like this, we we we'd be rich by now. We or at least we'd be rolling in more bankroll than we are now. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, man. It's it's why it's why uh it's why stock, you know, people who do stocks and bonds, it's why they so stressed out, man. They're always trying to find an inside track. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true, man. Uh, for me, it's still Red Tails. I, yeah. I I really don't see it any other way. Red Tails makes the most sense out of everything that they've talked about. That's Warriors, I don't like Warriors because we already have a Warriors in the NBA. I I, I don't like that. I don't like it. No. Um, I Renneg- Stephen A. said he like Warriors. Yeah, I, I I can't rock with Warriors. I can't. Um, and then some of the other ideas, Red Wolves. Uh, I I don't know like what like what makes the Red Wolf synonymous with DC? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, you know, you're the second person that said something to me about uh, the name having to have validity to DC. Mm-hmm. Does it really have to be valid to DC? I think it would be nice if it did. Okay. Um, I th- I think. That gets first dibs. Now, if there's something along the idea that you want to come up with something different that's not synonymous, then because I don't fine. think any of these names, I don't think any of these names are, are you know tied to DC. No, and Red Tails, which is our favorite, isn't tied to yeah, DC. Like, I don't, yeah, you, I, it's interesting because um, when I first posted, you know, my stamp for Red Tails, somebody commented on my uh, page and was like, you know. That's nice, but it's not valid to DC. And I was like, "Well, does it have to be?" And 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 what mm-hmm. what would you what would you what would you name the the uh, Washington Football Team or the formerly the Redskins? What would you name them that is valid to DC? And and when have we ever had what like what names what other nicknames in sports are related to their cities? Uh, you mean like some examples? Yeah. In other in other cities? Yeah. I could think of a few. Uh, the Giants, uh, New York Giants, that is. Um, I was told years ago that the name Giants represents the tall skyscrapers in Manhattan. Okay. I don't know if there's you know validity to that, but that's what I was told years ago. Never heard um, that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the other. Um, what, what was the other thing? Oh. Um, the Orioles. So the Oriole is, I guess, the Maryland State bird. That's why they're called the Baltimore Orioles. Oh. So you have that. Okay. Um, the Ravens, um, when they first came here, um, when they were doing the voting on what the team name should be, 
So Edgar Allan Poe, who's a Baltimore native, who was a famous poet, Mm -hmm. had um, had this poem called The Raven. Raven. Uh And that's how the Ravens came about there. Uh I'm trying to think of. Oh, and and you know what? You're Steelers. Pittsburgh. Okay, yeah, the, right. The, the, yeah. the Steel City, That's a great you know, point. Great point. where they manu- where they manufacture steel. Yeah, that was That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um the the Detroit Pistons, you know, the Pistons is a part of a a car. Uh Detroit is Motor City. There's the you know, the connection with the city there. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm about to say yeah. Okay, close argument. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. We need yeah. to have a so so we need to have a a team a team name that's synonymous with DC is what people are suggesting. That's that's um, what people are saying. I've heard um someone say they could use the capitals with the exception that instead of spelling it uh with the T A L, which is the hockey team the way they spell it, um C A P I T O L. Yeah, that's stupid. Which I don't like which I don't like. Yeah, that's stupid. I, I, I don't like that. Um the other one I heard, Maestro the either the Washington Warhogs or the Washington Pigskins. Now mm, Pigskins are not gonna work. Um Warhogs. Warhogs maybe. Warhogs could work and the Hogs is referencing the offensive line from years ago yeah. that won all the Super Bowls back in the day. I, I saw a joke on uh, social media, the uh, Washington Dippers, which is a reference to uh uh, <laughs> cigarettes dipped in bombing fluids. So. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The dipper. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that that would that created some bad memories. That was, <laughs> I laughed. I, I just I just I had a quick laugh. Oh man, but um, yeah, man. I I can't think of really. Yeah, you could you could because I was per- fully prepared. I hope you breaking up. No, I was saying that I hope that it comes down to if they got to pay this dude that owns this trademark, then just go ahead and pay this dude for this trademark and get the Red Tails name going. How much I've money already do you think seen that dude stands to make off of that over over that fucking trademark. Mm, I'm just gonna throw a number out there, right? Right. I'm gonna I'm just throw right. like seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Shit, that's all you. And think? that might be low. Yeah, that that might be low. low. I think that, that might be low. low. You know, I mean, would it would it surprise me if it's in the millions? No, it wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me at all, man. Ah, uh, yeah, I want that. I want. Oh, you want my name, huh? Yeah, I would. If I was that guy, not only would I ask for the money, I would ask for a stake in the franchise. Facts. So. Facts. Yeah, I mean, we talking about yeah, we talking about a billion dollar organization in the in the Redskins. I want more. I want. I, I, you gonna pay me, and I want. Hey, I want a, a oh, percentage. Yeah. You gonna top pay ten, me. Yeah. top ten valued franchise, and not just football, all sports. <laughs> yeah, I want my money. I want my yeah. money. Facts. What you got? What, what, what you got? Go, what's, what's word, you got, man? Word. What you got going like on? I was saying about Red Tails, oh, right? Book. So I've seen a lot of renderings with the artwork, the logos, and all that stuff. Uh huh. Dope. Yeah, find a way to make it happen. Everything I've Washington seen, Washington football team. Everything I've seen, I liked, especially the helmet. You breaking, you breaking up. Now I'm breaking up. <laughs> we both breaking up. Now I was saying oh. that uh, I was saying that everything, everything I've seen as far as concept art for the jerseys and stuff, I liked. I've liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I I, I love I loved it. So, um, so hopefully they get it done, man. Yeah. What right, you man, think? What you think? Um, I don't, I, I don't know if they're going to make it happen, but I, I'm still holding out hope. Yeah, me too. Um, in the end, I predict that they're going to go with something else. Yeah. I'm going to go with something else. But if, you know, it's something that's on this trademark list and you got to pay the guy. Facts. And they probably don't want to pay the guy. You know, when Dan Snyder asks, he probably don't. Right. So what you got on your list, man? Um, you know what, man? We 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 got to get back into this Deshaun Jackson thing, man. Okay. Um, there, there's been some things that have happened since we last, you know, did the show. You got the Stephen Jackson stuff, and then you got Deshaun Jackson who got fined 
by the team for you know what he posted in regards to the Hitler quote or the non Hitler quote if if you want to call it that. So um so I remember you saying last week that you was gonna have some problems if the team had either cut or fined him yeah. for um what he posted. So I still don't, uh, well let me let, let me walk it back. I'll walk okay. it back. Okay. Um Riley Cooper called a, a black woman security guard who was just trying to do her job a nigga and he mm-hmm. got fined. Now, yes. Now obviously I don't want obviously we know what happened in the aftermath of him getting extensions and all that other bullshit that shouldn't have happened. Um mm-hmm. but but particularly to the action they fined him and yep. and told him and and, and and they moved on. So um Nah, I, I wanted to walk it back. I still don't like it. I wanted to walk it back. I, I tried. I don't like it. I don't like they find them. I don't like it. My my, I tried to walk it back because it's like, all right, somebody's feelings was hurt. And you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and, and if you offend somebody, you should at least respect the fact that you offended them. Um, mm-hmm. I can acknowledge that somebody is offended, but he don't. he didn't deserve to be fined for this shit. He didn't deserve to be fined for it. I'm, I'm sorry. He didn't say anything slanderous. He didn't say anything hatred. You know, the quote wasn't even anything, uh, you know, malicious. Like, it was just mm-hmm. him saying it was him or it was not really him. But, you know, in a sense, being that he posted would, would connotate that he represents what was said in the passage. Um, he, he spoke what he believed to be his truth, man. Like, and... On a little bit of the bias side, it's Ja True. So it's like for me, what are we finding this dude for? I, I'm 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 not with it. I, I, this is, I guess this is the meeting of the you know how both sides met and this is the conclusion how everybody compromised because the way they was they was at first they was talking like I mean you would have thought he was about to get cut by by you know Thursday last week. So if the mm-hmm. if the solution is. If the compromise is, I would rather say, if the compromise is, you know, we'll just find you and leave it alone and, you know, you can go on your apology tour and you're going to go meet with this guy of the Jewish community and these other guys of the Jewish, you know, fine of that. But I don't think he should have been fine, man. I, I, I just don't. And there's nothing that still to this day, I don't feel like um, there is nothing he said that requires him being fined. If you want to say hey, you know, it wasn't my intent to offend you, and if you did, I apologize for offending you? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm with that, but I'm not sorry for what I posted. I believe that. And if it's not you, the particular person I'm apologizing to, then, all right, cool. But, look, I don't owe you no apology for me speaking my truth. If I'm wrong, then tr- then prove that I'm wrong. I Like, I, I, don't, I don't see... That was the nice way of putting it in that passage, in my opinion. That was the nice way of putting it, putting how we feel about, um, not necessarily, I, I can't speak to specifically white Jews. What I can say, mm-hmm. though, is that, uh, and, and call me ignorant for, for it if you, if, you know, if you feel the need. Mm-hmm. A Jewish person is a white person to me. And... Um, Am I going to sit here and act like I don't feel like some of these Jewish people have oppressed my people at some point in this, of this, you know, of me living in America? I feel that way. So, I feel that way and I feel like that's what was being said in the passage. <laughs> so, tell me I'm wrong. Just tell me I'm wrong. And if, and if you're offended, all right. I ain't mean to offend you, but I'm not going to take back what I said. I meant it. So I got a lot to say on this, right? Um, and just to kind of respond to uh, Jewish people and you looking at them as white people, I've always felt the same way about that. So just to kind of give you an experience for me when it comes to Jewish people, I can't speak for any other industry but the real estate industry, right? So. My grandfather, he lived in his building in Brooklyn for so many years. Um, I knew I knew the superintendent very well. I knew his neighbors very well. 
But the one thing that I always paid attention to, right, was who had ownership of the entire building. And it was always either a property manager or it was some kind of management company. You want to know who those management companies were run by or owned by? They were owned by rabbis. They were owned by Jewish people. And with my experience with delivering merchandise to other buildings in the neighborhood and all that stuff. And, you know, in the, in the neighborhood I worked in, just a few blocks from there, it's a Jewish community. You know, you got the synagogue, you got businesses, you got the whole nine. I mean, everything Jewish, everything rabbi. You see people walking down the street, they got the kufi on. Um, they got think, the, you I know. it's called a kufi, by the way. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, gotcha. I'm just gonna use that term for now. But you know, with, with the rabbis, you you see them with their long hair. Sometimes it's in like a a braid, you know, on one side and on the other, and all that stuff. So that was my experience when it came to um, Jewish people and what they were all about. Now, the way I come at it is, is that I give them a lot of respect on a business level because, and I talked about it last week. They're one of the best when it comes to acquiring assets and gifting it to your kids. When it comes down to a point, if you're 50 or you're 60 years old and it's time for those assets to go in another person's name, guess what? Those kids get those assets and it's just a generational cycle that keeps going on and on and on. So, And, and, then, those, and then those generations continue to improve on it as the years go by. Exactly. Exactly. So so that's where my experience, you know, growing up in New York, um, working in Brooklyn, working, you know, blocks away from a Jewish community um, with all kinds of things that's kind of catered to them and the properties that they own. They they own a lot of these properties. And again, I'm not the industry touch on Steven Jackson and what he said in a second, but I can't, I can't speak for any other industry, but real estate. So if folks have something out there that you might've experienced with Jewish people in terms of the kind of businesses they own and what kind of platforms they have, then, Hey, let us know. But, um, real estate, particularly in New York city, um, Jewish people, they, you know, they got a pretty good lock on that. I can't give a percentage. I don't know what the number is, but that's that's my experience. And be clear, well, what Stephen Jackson? Go I'm ahead, sorry, go and, ahead. and to be clear, that don't make that don't, just because they own the land don't make them the oppressor. I'm just saying it's looking it's looking a little funny in the light. If I'm if I'm basing if I'm calling that passage to be if I'm looking at that passage and the validity of that passage is is looking like uh white jewish people got it on my show you're breaking up yo i don't know why i keep going out and you keep going out (laughs) um yeah i don't don't know what's going on but yeah i kind of missed what you said there no i was saying that um shit out because i was on i was i was rolling um i was saying that uh (laughs) i just uh it just it it seemed a little it just seems a little funny that um you know, white Jewish people have control, and and you you speak on real estate, but I I, I hear the term Jewish lawyers a lot. Um, you know, Jewish bankers and and accountants mm-hmm. like they got they got a community of shit sewed up, and I don't I I can't say specifically. Um, it's Jewish white people that are uh, oppressing uh, black people, but I'm willing to bet based on their power structure in America. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I, I, I'm fine with being ignorant if I, if that's the case, um, <laughs> it seemed like they got a hold on shit and, and the people that got a hold on shit are the people that are holding us down. And let's remember maestro being Jewish is not a race. Jewish is a religion. So anybody can be Jewish. I could be Jewish. Yeah. You know, there's, there's black Jews, there's black Jews. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not a race thing, which sort of to your point, how you feel about them, you know, particularly white Jewish people um, being somewhat of the oppressor, um, if you will. I I think there's some validity to that. I don't think it's 100 percent there, but I do think 
there's something there. I do think there's something yeah, there. And, I'm not, and again, um, let me be clear, and, and, I, and I'll be clear, and I, and I want to, and you can get to your point. I'm not saying mm-hmm. every single white Jewish person is a, is an oppressor, <laughs> but I, I don't am, think that's true. Yeah, but I am willing to bet that there is a high percentage of them, or a percentage of them. I won't say high or low. There's mm-hmm. a percentage of Jewish mm-hmm. people that are um, oppressing black people. Right, and I, and I think it's safe to say that. While we do have white allies, I really believe in my heart that we do have Jewish allies as well. Sure, sure. I mean, a lot of a lot of Jewish people have talked about the the march and the fight that they've done, you know, to help, you know, black people out, you know, in the past and, you know, to this current day. So I, I do believe that I don't want to just paint a broad brush over the entire Jewish community because I don't think that's true. But getting to Steven Jackson, um, I'm so disappointed and, and not that I'm disappointed with him on a personal level, but he was on Don Lemon last week and Don Lemon was great with the questions. Um, I didn't feel like he was trying to trap Steven Jackson in any way. And obviously, Steven Jackson felt a certain kind of way during the interview. But I just wish that Steven Jackson would have just talked a little deeper in detail about what he meant by when he said, hey, Deshaun was telling the truth. He mentioned the banks being owned by the... I'm, I'm getting ready to say the Goldsmiths, but I know that's not the family name. I can't remember the name. Rothschilds, mm-hmm. yes. He, he, he mentioned that briefly, but he didn't necessarily dig deeper into uh, that topic. I was just waiting for him to just say, hey, just do just come out and say it. We, we know what the deal is. Jewish people, they have a community. They have ownership in certain assets. They own some of these companies. Bruh, just just lay it out there. I mean, don't feel like you got to be pressured into. Do this whole. But. Nonetheless, he did. He said that, you know, he could have used his words better. He could have explained it a little better. And then what CNN did on that interview. Right. So Zach Banner from the Pittsburgh Steelers did a video talking about the plight of Jewish people and how he said that Jewish people go through some of the same um, some, some of the same issues that black people go through. And right there, I just kind of threw my hands up because I'm like, this, 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 just, that's just not true. Not true at all. So then they cut away from the video. Don Lemon asked Steven Jackson, hey, do you agree with everything in this video? And Steven Jackson said, yeah, I agree with everything in the video. And I just was like, oh, come on. Like, Well, here's the <laughs> thing. Um, there was a time where uh, Hitler was killing Jewish people. Mm-hmm. On a pretty uh, high and consistent six million people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am not here to compare struggles. Um, yeah, exactly. That that's what I don't want to. I don't want to get into that because I I didn't. I never felt that this is what this was about. You know what I'm saying? If it, it was never about whose struggle is better than the other people's struggle or my struggles worse than your struggle. It was for me. It was just never about that. It was just about one guy making a point, um, and the media just kind of, you know, looking at it the other way, and other people in sports kind of looking at it the other way as well. And then you had people, and I'm I'm kind of surprised at this, but you had people on Twitter saying that. Deshaun Jackson wasn't getting enough smoke from the NFL community. And I was like, really? Well, what like you, I'm, when, when you say the NFL community, who was you referring to? Cause, um, uh, teammates. I, th- I think people were referring to teammates, coaches, uh, maybe NFL media. Um, I, I think that's who the people they were referring to. But I think the reason for that, I, and I kind of saw what, they were alluding to, but I think part part of the reason for it is because it's not a lot of Jewish players in the league. There might have been maybe two or three that have spoken up. I mentioned Zach Banner with the Steelers right. doing the video, and then I think a couple other people had said something also, and we know that uh, the Eagles owner, Jeffrey Lurie, is Jewish, and we also know GM Howie Roseman 
is of the Jewish community as well. Mm. Uh, a Jewish owner of the NFL where we uh, that we all assume to be racist owners. Interesting. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but again, again, Jewish is not a race. It's a religion. <laughs> hey, so so I'm, hey. it I'm just it, hey. I'm it, just... It, it, it correlates. No, it, it correlates with your point. It, I... it, it, cor- it correlates with your point. You know, these guys are looked at as white people. And the NFL is looked at as a racist, oppressed um, business. So I, I, I'm not uh, I'm not against what um, you know that narrative is, but I, I, I was disappointed with Stephen Jackson um, during that interview that I he just didn't kind of go deeper into you know what he really you know what Deshaun really meant. You know what I mean? Well, I, I'm not in this. I, I didn't watch the Don Lemon uh, interview, but I'll say this. If if based on what you said, I feel like he should have went went hard. Like nah, I I said what I said, and I ain't mm-hmm. gotta explain that because he might not be articulate in exactly what Deshaun was trying to say. Or but that's true. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I would have definitely if if that wasn't his take in the interview, and it don't seem like it based on what you're telling me. I would have mm-hmm. been like nah, nigga. I said what I said. Deshaun Jackson ain't say nothing wrong. I'm riding with Deshaun Jackson. I don't care about nothing about which none of y'all are saying. And you could throw yeah. all the questions and all the big words. At the end of the day, it's a lot of Jewish people, white Jewish people, that are in power in America. And it just so happens that 400 years later, black people are still oppressed. I'm not saying it's all white Jewish people. I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. all white you know, whatever religion or however you can classify a white person through social classes. But what I'm saying is, is that black people are still being oppressed and Jewish people are in power. And the passage mm-hmm. says that this was going to happen or that this Jew- is happening. And, and Jewish people, I think, to the important part is that after they were killed during the Holocaust, their reparations we as a people as black people we're still you know it's 400 plus years and counting you we're still uh, trying to fight you for broke that. up but I, I i'm assuming you said jewish people got their reparations yes yes yeah, yeah. so t- hello <laughs> six million yeah. six million yeah. y'all people died and that is tragic let's be very clear that is tragic yep but y'all were yep. s- Y'all were, and, and, and I don't want to sit here and say reimbursed because, you know, you can't bring back six million people no matter how much money you give out. But y'all were compensated mm-hmm. for your trouble. Right. And that's not to say that moving forward, if Jewish people feel like they're offended by something, that they shouldn't feel offended by it. That's that's not to say that. It's, just to, it's just to drive the point home that what's going on right now is that we as black people we're still in a minority when it comes to ownership of assets and ownerships of businesses whereas jewish people particularly white jewish people have overcome that they've crossed that hurdle and they've been got their reparations are, and, and as a community they are a part of the one percent that control the world what is so hard to grasp about this concept you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's look again. You know what it is. You know what it is. It's because the the narrative out there is is that it's a conspiracy theory. You know, and and just to kind of bring back the banking situation for a minute, everyone is saying, "Oh, this is this is a conspiracy theory." They don't they don't own any banks. They don't run all the banks and stuff like that. And again, I can't speak for the banks, but I think in a in a in a general whole overall. I think they run a certain amount of they they have that one percent of power. They they, they really do. Yeah. I, I I really feel like that. Yeah. Um, let me but, say, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you still had more. But it, I don't want. No, go ahead. We need to shout out the chat. We need to shout out the chat. Room. All right. So uh, we, let me say I, I'll go from the bottom to the top. Number one, Chief Rocker Jersey Vern from the uh, BFTN. Network, what's up? or I should say BFT Network, however y'all do it. <laughs> what's going on? RC, what's going on? Wait a minute, show. What up? What's what up? happening? Uh, but, but, but if I didn't, I feel like I just said RC, but what's up? You get two shout outs. Deacon Dale, Melvin, what's going on? Um, what's popping, everybody. Um, RC's comment um, My dad's best friend was Jewish. 
He lived next door to us, and I learned a lot about boxing from him, and we had conversations about race. The first thing he always said to me was, both of our people were mistreated, but nothing can compare to 400 years of oppression. Hey, Facts. that way. Facts. That way. Um. All right, so... Uh, I got my little, I got my little, uh, my little, ain't this some shit type conversation. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't uh, look. Um, anytime, anytime, anything in a negative light is said about my queen, I got to speak up about it, and um, I'm going to speak up about it. Oh, are you transitioning? Yeah, to another I am, topic. I am transitioning to oh, another okay. topic. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, yeah. I. I. I, I I had something else on the, the Sean Jackson thing, and I'll be quick about it. But um, as far as the fine goes, uh, I'm not happy that he got fined, but I'm okay with it in the sense that if we're going to look back at the Riley Cooper thing, Riley Cooper got suspended uh, from training camp for about three, four days. He was fined, and I think at this point the Eagles have – They've they've maintained that precedent because we said last week that they set a precedent by keeping Riley Cooper on the team after that incident. So fast forwarding to Deshaun Jackson, they find him. And obviously because of covid, there's no training camp. So what are they going to suspend him from at this point? Um, At this point, the Eagles have they've maintained that precedent. Now, a lot of folks still feel like this isn't over. A lot of people feel like Deshaun Jackson still has an opportunity to be cut from this team and not play this season for them. I'm on the optimistic side that I think he will play for this team. I think there's just a few things that people need to keep in mind. Um, Number one, Deshaun Jackson is 33 years old. Um, He's on a three-year deal. He's going to be going into the second year of that deal. And after this season's over, there's... There's going to be questions about whether, um, you know, is he too old? Has he lost a step? Um, I want to spend the money to help the cat. Uh, those will be some of the quote unquote excuses. Um, if this thing still becomes an issue, you know, from now throughout the season, that they'll make an excuse that Deshaun Jackson's getting old, he's lost a step, and we could save some money by cutting him after the season. So you got to keep that in mind. So um, do you think they second, would cut him? Um, do you think they they would cut him after this season? Based, uh, uh right. Let me throw a well, scenario at you before you yeah. answer. If yeah, go he ahead. Go if ahead. he catches sixty balls, no homo, and sixty mm-hmm. balls, no homo for uh, let's say eight hundred seventy yards and six touchdowns, do they cut him after this year? No. No. Okay, let me throw another that, scenario that, at you. That, that kind of production at his age, that's good production. Right. Let me throw another scenario at you. Let's go lower. If he yep. catches 45, 604 touchdowns, is he cuttable? He's on that borderline of being cuttable, in my opinion. And also, I think it depends on what that rookie does also. If that rookie balls out and Deshaun Jackson puts those low kind of numbers up, then yeah, he he he's toting on that borderline. We should cut him. We should keep him. Maybe we'll cut him and then we'll bring him back at a cheaper cost. So you, but but you, but you're saying that they will cut him based off of production and what you know salary cap, and it would have nothing to do with. Um, it would have. I'm nothing- saying they'll. I'm saying they would use that as an excuse to cut him if. This thing still, you know, what what he posted about the Hitler quote, if this thing still catches steam, if the media continue to make it a big deal, if the team continues to make it a big deal, which I don't expect the team's going to do that. But if somehow this was a trending topic from now, you know, going into the season, then I could see the excuse of he's 33 going on 34. He's lost a step. We need to move on from him. We got the rookie right here. Um, you know, let's bump him up. Okay. I, I could I, I could see that being a possibility there. Mm-hmm. Um, but in comparison to um, Riley Cooper, um, Riley Cooper, after he got fined and after he, you know, served the suspension from the training camp, he played that entire season. And that just so happened to be his best season of his short career because yeah. his career was his career was short. short yeah. 
Um, he got the contract extension. I think it was like five years and uh, and twenty five million Nuffin dollars. Now for yep. Trey, to cut you off, I feel like they was targeting him intentionally that year. Now that I'm sitting here replaying that year in my head, that's that mm-hmm. year when he had 14 touchdowns, right? Yeah, yeah, he had 14, 13 touchdowns, something like that. I think he had like 80 something catches that year. I feel like they and, was on him intentionally, like, "Ooh, we going we gonna make them forget about the fact that you call you called uh, that black woman niggas, or you will fight these niggas, that every nigga, in, whatever he said." I feel like they was trying to make people forget about that story with uh, yep. production. Which which leads me to one name, Chip Kelly. Yeah. Let's let's remember that was Chip Kelly's first year. Yep. This was the same Chip Kelly that ran got the mark for Murray, ran Deshaun Jackson out of town, ran Shady McCoy out of town. Both players were in their prime. Um, picked up a bum ass Sam Bradford. Um, picked up DeMarco Murray when he just got like 400 carries the previous year. And I, and I, and I still to this day feel like they got him because they didn't want the Cowboys to get him. Mm. I really, cause he, he didn't, he didn't really fit into that offense that Chip was trying to run there. He really didn't fit. Like he was just, he was just God awful, um, that season. But, um, this is the same guy again that chose Blaine Gabbert to be his quarterback in San Fran. And, I, I truly believe that he was sort of the driving engine that got Riley Cooper that contract extension. Because remember this, 2015, that was the Sam Bradford year. They, you know, they had a bad season that year. Chip Kelly gets fired. Riley Cooper gets cut that same offseason. And not an NFL team other than the Eagles even sniffed this guy. That was Riley Cooper's last year in the NFL. I don't nah, know what that. I thought he went to like uh, Riley Cooper went somewhere after he left Philly. Philly, I thought. Well, if he did, he didn't do no, nothing. No, he for didn't him. do nothing. No, I, I, that that's true. But he did. He definitely did get another job. Okay. He de- he definitely went somewhere else. Yeah, I, I'm 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 gonna tell huh. you as soon as I as soon as I Google it. But yeah, I, I'm I'm oh, really okay. confident he went somewhere else and. Uh, RC, I believe, is correcting us. It, he, uh, it was eight touchdowns that year. Eight, eight touchdowns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I thought it was in the double digits. I thought but, so um, too, but, uh, but I haven't got to my Google yet because I'm trying to figure out what page I'm going to get rid of because I keep, I keep my shit open all the time. <laughs> I got so many. Pages. Yeah, really. I got so many fucking pages open and uh, Safari pages open on my phone. It don't make no damn sense. Uh, oh, that's, that's that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, RC, you, you you're right, man. Uh, eight touchdowns, eight hundred and thirty five yards receiving. Uh, eighty. He got eighty four targets. He didn't necessarily catch eighty four yeah, sure, balls. Sure. Um, he caught 47 balls for 835 and, you know, eight touchdowns. But, I mean, that still was his best, you know, year out of the, you know, the short career that he had. Right. Um, but I – so, you, oh, you're going to find out where else he went, right? That's what you're I'm looking trying to, to find out. I, I think I might be wrong because I don't see – I don't see uh, – you might be right. I thought he – okay. I, I swore he went somewhere else. He oh, released, okay. He had a tryout with Tampa Bay. A but, tryout, but didn't okay. make the roster. Um, okay, yeah, you're right. He didn't go anywhere else. I saw okay. he went somewhere else, though. Oh, okay, okay. Like they actually signed him to a contract, and then was like, you know what, you're just not gonna get no burn. Yeah, that's what I thought. But come to find out, that wasn't the case. But oh, okay. yeah. Okay, so yeah, so I, it, I truly in my heart, right? Um, if Chip, if Chip Kelly's not the coach, I don't think Riley Cooper's on that roster. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just that's just my opinion because sure. Chip Kelly made some real like stupid ass decisions <laughs> during his time in Philly. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like you, you know, and I'm I'm not a Nick Foles guy, but that year he threw 29 and two interceptions, yeah. 29 touchdowns, two interceptions. Got rid of him after that, yeah, right. or maybe the it, maybe it was the year, the year after, after that. Think, yeah. But but they still they still went ten and six that year. They missed the playoffs, but they went ten and six. And then next thing you know, he bogarts Howie Roseman, you know, for power, 
And now you're seeing guys getting shipped up out of town in their prime and all this stuff. And Chip Kelly was sort of like the GM. Like, people don't realize he had a lot more power in that front office than people um, were led to believe. I don't know. I, I feel like, well, I don't know what, what other people thought, but I feel like he had power. I, I think that's why they was able to uh, pull the trigger on him and let him go. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think Harry Roseman in his sleep in I don't think he would even dream about getting rid of Shady McCoy and Deshaun Jackson in their primes. Yeah, he when he would he wouldn't did that. Yeah, I feel you. Um, so so moving on. Um, I'm passionate about this because you're not uh, ex Cowboy linebacker Cal Kiero. I want to say is his name. Uh, came went on Twitter to uh, speaking on the name of the Queen Jill Scott, and um, this won't take long. Uh, he basically put out a tweet saying, "Y'all attracted to Jill Scott? I ain't saying she ugly, but y'all sexually attracted to her." I'm not. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Um, mm-hmm. And needless to say, he was drugged on Twitter. Um, yes, he was. He was drugged to the point of an apology. Um, he was. And you know he would start a cop and please. Um, let me let, let's let's be clear. Uh, I love Jill Scott and and and, I, and on all levels. Like I wish I could marry her and she could sing me to sleep every night. I'm not mad at Cal Kiero for having the opinion, even though it's an ignorant ass opinion. And in my opinion, he's wrong. But I'm I I, I really do grow weary of people. Um, feeling like they need to change their mind because people don't agree with them. That's one. On the flip side of that, while I'm trying mm-hmm. to shoot them bail and say you should you should you should stick to your guns, um I mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of nigga this is that could ever look at Jill Scott and say she's not attractive. Young, old, um, black, white or indifferent, I cannot imagine a motherfucker that could say Jill Scott ain't a sexually and I mean sexually attractive woman. Like, like of all time, she like of all time, Jill Scott Jog like gotta be in that list of all time. Not because she the slimmest or the. It's just something about her aura, though. Like she's gotta be in the all time sexiest women ever. And Cal Kiero, I, you know what I, you know what I attributed to? I attributed to him mm-hmm. being young and not knowing what, not not just not knowing it when it's hitting him in his face. Uh, so there was a saying on Martin years ago, breath smelling like Similac, uh-huh. you got, you know, you're wet behind the ears. This this is what this cat sounds like. He's just wet behind the ears and, you know, he, he just has no idea. He just has no idea. Yeah. Has has no clue has whatsoever. no idea. And, you're allowed, at, at, and, and, and let's be clear, just because he don't got no, no clue don't mean mm-hmm. he's not entitled to his opinion. You allowed to have an opinion. But this sounds like the opinion of somebody who has not uh, lived long enough to appreciate the true beauty and sexual essence. Yeah, had to take it to essence when you're talking about Jill Scott. Uh, Of you, you you don't know. You you, you're a young nigga. At first, I wanted to attribute to the fact that maybe he just doesn't like plus size women. But I'm like, in the end, I'm like, nah, nah. dude. I think you're just young, man. Just I, th- I think you, I think you just young. not. Yeah, you're just not aware, man. You got, it, yeah. it, it, here's the advice I would offer to Mr. Kiero, brother. If you ever get an opportunity, go to a Jill Scott concert, or even if you can't go to one, look up some Jill Scott concerts on YouTube. They're they're readily there for you. Facts. Look look at her performances. And look at some of the exotic things that she does during her performances. Man, now, just watch her talk. <laughs> now, now, <laughs> if that don't tell you how much of a amazing you know woman she is, then I don't know what. I I, I can't help you, bro. Facts, facts. But that, but that, but that's my that's my advice to him. Facts. Let me say what's up to H Rap B, who just joined the chat room. Uh, Denise Milk and Cookies, who had joined the chat room. What's going on? Long time What's no up? see. What's Long up? Long time no see. Um, H Rap, I do not. We do not have a calling number, but it's a. It's interesting. I should be able to. Uh, I should be able to incorporate that in future episodes. We may. You think we need to bring that back? 
Uh, yeah, I think we need to bring it back. Maybe we'll, uh, well it. I, I think we, we definitely need to do some interviews for certain, but we'll talk about that off, you know, I off to the know, side. Man. I don't know, man. But we'll, yeah, we'll talk about it offline. Um, yep. So yep. let me let me. OK, I, I, I'll get to something else that's bothering me. So I, I, I saw on ESPN yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, Ella Elena Della Don from the Mystics. Um, yes. I didn't notice uh, she has Lyme disease, mm-hmm. and uh, apparently she has been. Even though uh, she is in high risk for uh, getting Corona because of Lyme disease, if I'm understanding the story correctly, uh, mm-hmm. she has been cleared by her doctors to play, um, which means she can't sit out and be paid um, because she's cleared to play. Yep. And she is being, even though she knows she's high risk to catch it, she got to go play. Or, you know, according, or or play or, or don't get paid. That's that's where where she's at right now. Mm-hmm. Is I, that is that a thing in the WNBA alone? Like, I, is, does that go for everybody I that's got something similar? I don't know, but if I, I, I got to tell you, um, in these times, in these days, right now, Mm-hmm. Um, you you got to start making you got to start making some adjustments to your contracts. This is ridiculous. You're essentially saying you're essentially saying go out there and catch COVID nineteen for as little as WNBA players get, get paid. That's what they're asking them to do. That's what, yeah. That's you, you're and, I, and, I, and I think and I think it's unfortunate. I think it's I think it's unfortunate and I that think it's bullshit. Yeah. It's bullshit. I, I get it. I, I know to, to to anybody who's going to tell me it contracts and that's the what she signed up for and all that other bullshit. Nobody signed up for COVID nineteen, bro. I'm already against. I'm already against the fact that people are going out and playing. Let's be clear. While mm-hmm. while you know while we um while we talk about Della Don, let's give a let's send our prayers to Russell Westbrook who just tested positive. Yeah. They and should. I'm not, and I'm not sure if this is true either. But James Harden, I saw um, test positive. Uh, that was see. a fake um, yeah, story I, that I, I read. I but yeah, I, 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 I thought say, I saw something where I he's say, got it too. Yeah, too. I would say that's a fake story. I would. I mean that you know that's okay. Okay, I would guess. That's just my guess. Um, okay. Yeah, but um, y'all y'all gonna y'all are gonna put her in that position. And let's be clear. WNBA players don't make a whole bunch of money. I, I know they just got a, um, a, a up a raise, like I, I, the entire league got some type of raise. I know we talked about it months ago, but they still don't make a whole bunch mm-hmm. of money. So you ask her, I don't, you know, I don't know what her, you know, financial situation is. If her husband good, and you know, what I'm saying, and you know, so she don't got to play if she don't really want to, or if she's the primary breadwinner where she really got to play because she got to support her family. I don't know what the situation is, but I know this is a bullshit situation in these times right now, where I, mm-hmm. where I am telling you, I am diagnosed. The paperwork is in. I am at high risk to catch COVID nineteen if I play, and y'all are saying so what? Because that's the let's say if she really needs the mm-hmm. money, then she's gonna go play. You know she's gonna, yep. you know where well what she what might happen because she's mm-hmm. at high risk, she might catch COVID nineteen. She might get COVID nineteen. Then she's gonna have to sit out. But then before we even find out she had it or don't have it or whatever, mm-hmm. guess what she's doing? Infecting other people. It's like what are we yeah. doing? What are yeah, we if doing? I'm- if I'm her, I just I just sit out because that's what's going to be the inevitable anyway. That's that's what's eventually going to happen. She's going to go into these games. She's going to go into this bubble, whatever. I don't know what their situation is. She's going to go and play. She's going to infect other people if she contracts it. She may contract it, and then now she's back to not playing. And now, so, and now she, and then also to add to that, she is in a fight for her life. Hmm. Yeah, un- unbelievable, un- unreal. Like, look, um, listen here. I don't. I, I hope. I hope she's covered with some type of insurance or something. Um, cause yeah, she shouldn't play. Um, but the WNBA, they 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 not doing the right in this one. And I, and I get it. It's business. Blah blah blah. And I'm not even saying mm-hmm. I'm so much. I get it. But it's bullshit. Didn't they just? Didn't they just renegotiate a CBA? 
They did something within yeah the, within the last cause they, year because everybody got because I, I, I believe the the minimum uh, the uh, league minimum is higher now because of that CBA. Like women are right. getting paid more money. Right, right. Damn, they they might need to renegotiate that thing again, man. I mean, yeah. I get it. COVID nineteen, you know, nobody thought COVID nineteen was a person, but you, you're gonna have to come back to the table on this too because. This might be a thing going into 2021, this and it's already affecting how teams and leagues are going to start their seasons come next year anyway. So I, I think you got to go back and look at that CBA and try to figure out how to get these girls paid because, you know, someone like Elena Deladon, who's got this condition, who can easily be contracted by it, God knows how many other players in the league are like that. Yeah. And, and and that's unfortunate. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Araldis Chapman and DJ LeMahieu also with the Yankees because they tested positive for uh, COVID-19. And their season is about to start next week um, from Thursday. Man, y'all, look, I'll say it and I'll say it again. As much as I miss watching sports, this this is the wrong time, man. This is the wrong time. This yeah, is it's, the it's wrong not- time. We gonna we gonna wait till somebody dies because you know they contracted this thing. Yeah, is, is that what it's gonna take for yeah. these leagues to just you know close up shop? And not just and not just um, not just sports, but unfortunately in life period we normally don't make changes until something drastic happens. And I hate I I hate that is coming to. I this. hate it. Yeah, but like I said, man, we we should we should n- sports should not be happening. Not boxing, not mm. UFC, not baseball, basketball, football, hockey, whatever the fuck. None of this shit should be going on right now. And I get it; people will need to yeah. make their money, and they would be with they're willing to risk it to make their money. Mm-hmm. Right? Sports ain't it. Y'all gotta y'all sports ain't it right now. We had a couple of leagues cancel their season. Uh, the Ivy League did cancel their football um, season, which I understand they're not as lucrative as like the Big Ten or the ACC. Sure. But I would like to hear about, yo, what y'all going to do? Because if y'all not going to let students on campus, and I'm talking academically, if right. y'all not going to let them on campus – what makes you think that it's going to be okay to let your student athletes come into a training room on a field and act like y'all going, you know, like y'all going ball? Like, yeah. I, I, I just this don't see nasty. how they're going to have. A, yeah, I, I don't see like foot like college football is going to be in a much worse situation. Right. Like, like in terms of losses, revenue and just the, the optics of of trying to start a season when your academic students are going to be taking online classes and are not going to even be present to even attend these games. Right. I think they're in a much worse situation. In terms of baseball, they're actually traveling, you know, up and down, you know, like the East Coast, at least for the, you know, the teams in the East. They're traveling to each other's stadiums. They're not in a bubble. Yeah. So, you know... Who knows how they could possibly contract this thing while they're traveling? I mean, they're going to be in private planes. I get that. Um, I'm sure that each other, right? They're going to be around each other, families, and come back. However that works, Um, Mm -hmm. their families are going to meet them wherever they are, or however it works, they're going to be in contact with people in their personal lives, and then come back to the business uh, people and this, you know, the team. And yep. and wherever you know, it's it's just nasty, man. And and you know what? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah. It, it it gets a little. It, it it's a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating to me. I I ain't gonna lie to you. It's it's just a little frustrating to me. Uh huh. Man, man, Un- unreal. Um, yeah. And while we're still dealing with COVID nineteen and the effect that it's having on sports, um, yep. really quick. Uh, the NFL, <laughs> mm-hmm. they're they are uh, going to uh, for, for all intents and purposes it's like we're going to have a regular season. Of, you know, we're going to have a regular football season, um, and their one of their attempts to stay safe amongst this pandemic is that they are officially banning post game jersey exchanges this season. 
Your thoughts? I, I really don't care. <laughs> uh, just off the rip, like, okay. I mean, I, I, I get it. You guys want to make money. You guys want to have product on the field. Y'all want to see the players, you know, bump heads play. I I, I totally understand it. Trey, these motherfuckers why not, are why, playing. Why not just go full Monty, right? Like, just understand really how serious this is. Understand that... <laughs> Football is contact. Players are going to make contact with each other. What the fuck other. are y'all talking about? What are y'all <laughs> talking about? What are y'all talking about? Like, is <laughs> this shit just grows more and more. And look, and, and let's be full, let's be clear. This is new to everybody. This yes. is new to everybody. And, every, and, 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 and we don't know how, to, we don't know what the right and wrong is. But it don't take a fucking genius to realize that this is just, this is just stupid. This is just stupid. This is like this is like the stupidest shit, uh, bro. We just got finished knocking each other's fucking heads off for sixty minutes. Right. <laughs> we can't swap it. Only thing you could do was uh, stop us from swapping jerseys. Yeah, uh, they just you know what it is. You we already know what it is, man. The, the owners are greedy. They're trying to squeeze every juice of the lemon they possibly can until they realize that they can't squeeze no more. White people make bad lemonade, bruh. That, that's what this is coming down. They make bad to, lemonade, bruh. Bro. They don't make good lemonade. No, they, they really don't. They, they really don't. And this is just, to me, shameful. I thought you were going to mention that the NFL has come out with these helmets where they got these like mouth guards. Um, well, not so much the mouth guards, but they have it inside the helmet, where I guess it's supposed to be like a mask for the football players. You know that kind of a thing, which, in my opinion, doesn't even look like it's very effective. I don't know if you saw this. I saw this on Twitter earlier today. I saw um, on it. So I, I, yeah. I don't think it's effective, in my opinion. I don't and I don't play football, but. Just if if you're talking about and right here where is probably about four inches from your face, I, I just don't see in a contact sport how you're going to prevent the spread of this virus yeah. with that. I, yeah. I just don't see that. Seems like I don't they see just it. sitting everybody uh, on the field and hoping for the best. Oh, of course, you know that's what it is. It's it it it, it reminds you of when the Big East tournament was starting. And they actually got that one half of basketball in, and then it was like, all right, the optics don't look good. We 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 got to stop this. Like that. That's what that's what this is. That's what the NFL is about to get themselves into right now. It, and I still have yet to see a contingency plan from them. Yeah. Like no no schedule shift. No, you know. Now they did they did take away preseason games. I I understand that, but I don't care about the preseason. Sure I care about what you're gonna do with the regular season, and y'all have done nothing to tell me what's Plan B. You know what? 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 What are we doing? What are we doing as a contingency? What's gonna be the backup plan if we don't start the weekend after Labor Day? What? What's gonna be the next move? Because the cases are gonna go up. up. The cases they're cases going up now, going up. and they're going to be going up come fall. <laughs> so. I, I don't know, man. It, it, the NFL is. I told you, man. It, it's a conspiracy theories, man. It's almost as if you, you got a guy in the NFL that's behind this COVID thing, man. Like it's, it's kind of like they know something we don't. Like they think this virus oh, is just gonna slowly, like, yeah, like they know this thing is just slowly gonna just magically disappear. It's gonna magically disappear because they put it there to begin with, and they know how yeah. to take it away. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, and 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 if I if I wasn't clear, uh, prayers out to, to Russell Westbrook who tested positive for COVID nineteen. Yeah, prayers out to all the athletes that for have sure. tested positive that had that are getting ready to start. You know their seasons: baseball, football, basketball, hockey, the whole thing. So, prayers out to everybody, man. Right. Um, ESPN has suspended Adrian Wojnarowski, who is the lead NBA reporter for that network, 
because he emailed the senator of Missouri a F you after comments that the senator made about China's relationship with the NBA. Um, hey, man. I, for, for, first of all, first of all, Adrian Wojnarowski is a savage for doing what he did. You know, in, in, in regular, like at a regular job, if you ever did something like that, like you emailed that to somebody within the company, you, you, you would get fired. Unless, like, you, unless <laughs> you was more valuable than, than fire, unless you was really valuable. Yeah, true, true. More, uh, more times than not, if you're somebody like us, you, you, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna lose you're gonna lose your job. Right. Um, Woj is a, is a savage for this one, man. I, I, I it, it kind of put a smile on my face when I saw the copy of the email, uh, back to the senator, or whatever. So, so just kind of getting to the problem, right? So, the senator has a problem with how, I guess, the league is not, or or how China's not calling out the NBA for, I guess, you know, some of their issues in regards to the relationship. Like you remember the the comment um, earlier this season about the um, uh, what 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 was it, Maestro? Help me out here. I, f- I, f- I forgot what it was about, but LeBron had spoken up and was like, um, you know, we you know we respect you know what's going on with China and stuff like that. He didn't want to lose the money, the endorsements, and all that okay, stuff. I, uh, and, and the and the Rockets and the Rockets GM said something. It, it has yeah, something. To, yeah, yeah. Right, it has right. something to do with him, Daryl Morey. Yeah. Daryl Morey said something about China that pissed China off, and you know had an effect on the relationship between the league and the country. So I think the senator was trying to make a point there. And, you know, I, I think like like everyone who's invested with the NBA, whether it's the networks, the players, the owners, if you had a relationship with somebody like China and, you know, there's a lot of money at stake, you're going to do whatever you can to protect that investment or to protect and, you know, keep that relationship going. Um, you're, damn, you're damn right. Well, which is to the better. You're right. Send up some money if you think, you know, you're just going to get in the way of the league and the, you know, relationship with China. You're damn right, man. Yeah, you was cut. You was you was breaking up just now, like you was cussing right now. I did make out majority of what you was saying. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think you was saying fuck you on <laughs> saying. Um, man, nah. I, yo, I don't pretend to be. Yeah. I don't pretend to be super privy to the story. But um, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm reading uh, RC's comment. He said the senator was also talking that Blue Lives Matter stuff and suggesting that they put that on their jerseys. Let me be clear, Senator of Missouri, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, uh, and another like, one. Yeah, like for real. Like, <laughs> fuck you, you piece of shit. That's and crazy. another one. Yeah, like, yeah, like who, who are you talking to, dog? Like, nah, that's. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I'm with I'm with Wojnowski. Go ahead, eat that suspension. Be, you'll be back, and you'll be better for you'll it. Be and you'll you'll be, be back. You'll be back, and you'll be better for it. Shouts out to to Adrian Wojnowski. Um, uh, yeah, he's he too valuable. Yeah, for sure. Dion's son has committed to uh-huh. FAU, Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic. Uh, shouts out to uh, Shador Congrats. Sanders. Uh, yep. Miles Garrett is closing on a five-year, one hundred and twenty-five million dollar contract. Congrats to Miles Garrett, and yep. um, this is very telling about how Cleveland uh, got closure on that entire situation with my, uh, Mason Rudolph. Um, congratulations mm-hmm. to that black man. We proud of you. Keep on doing yep. what you're doing. Uh, City I Chiefs. saw a lot of criticism. Oh, I saw a lot of criticism. I saw I saw a lot of criticism um, about that move to you know give Miles Garrett that contract. I can't imagine how. And, and 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 well, it's the it's the narrative. The Browns are doing Browns things, right? It's you know they're the Cleveland Browns until they prove us otherwise. This ain't the situation to be doing that. At all. This this ain't this ain't the situation. He's the best pass rusher. On that team, he's probably a uh, top ten in the uh, league, right? And I was I was getting ready to say he might be he might be the best player on the team, but I might be reaching there. 
Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, I look. I, 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 I might, I might be reaching there, but I don't know I, if I'm, you're reaching. But we, we'll. That's not an important. Discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if you're yeah, reaching. yeah. But yeah, this this guy, he he deserves the contract. I mean, the guy's got Hall of Fame written all over him, man. He he's he he's he's one to keep, man. I'm glad he got his money. Yeah. Uh, Chiefs Chris Jones signs a four-year, $85 million contract as well with hey, $70 million guaranteed. Pay uh, the man. Pay, get your money, black man, get your money. Lewis Hamilton is a NASCAR driver or a some type of a racer. I, I don't see NASCAR here, so maybe he's not a NASCAR driver. Um, uh, Shouts out to him who holds up the black mm-hmm. fist as he wins in the Styrian Grand Prix. Um, mm-hmm. no, no real story. Just wanted to shout him out because I've seen it. Fire shit. Um, you have anything else? Yeah, I just got a couple quick things, right? Okay, I uh, got one more thing, but I figure I let you let you cook. Okay, all right. So let me. I'll I'll run on this thing and then I'll let you you know hit on what you got and then I'll just close it out with the last thing here. Um, I gotta give a special shout out to. Alexandria, Virginia's own Kara Lawson. She got oh, yeah. the Duke. She got the Duke women's basketball coaching job. Um, awesome. I, I, it's, yeah, I it's, a, it's a great. It's a great. Yeah, great move. Great two um, years for her. Yeah, yeah, for certain. Uh, work with the Wizards. You know, play by play, and then she was on the Celtics uh, coaching staff yep. for a year, I think. First so now woman, she's first black woman yeah. to be an assistant coach. Yep, yep. And so now she's, you know, in a league where there's additional black women who are head coaches. You got Tina Thompson at UVA, and then you got, um, I, f- I forget the um, woman's name. She's at Notre Dame. I, f- I forget her name, but um, congrats to Kara Lawson Facts. Facts. Uh, for copping that job, man. And, uh, you know, good luck for certain. Yeah. Um, my last story was just. Um Jennifer Lopez, Erica Rodriguez are putting together a team. Alex Rodriguez? What did I just say? It it sounded like you said Erica, but you probably meant to say Eric, but it's not Eric. But Alex Rodriguez, (laughs) I'm I'm sitting here reading it, so I can't imagine how I would be trying to say that. Um, (laughs) But they are putting together a, uh, a, a team of investors to buy the New York Mets. Uh, includes such players as Brian Erlacher, DeMarco Murray, yep. Joe Thomas, Travis Kelsey. Um, also bidding, uh, if I'm reading this correct, the bidding group also includes Bradley Bill and Mason Plum. Mm-hmm. This is uh, mm-hmm. this is a great thing. A great thing. Um, I, I it's a it's a great it. thing. It's a great thing. It's it's. A- so just to so just to update you on this, right? Because okay. this was this was actually my last topic too. So I think that's good. Um, the Mets are going to put out another rebid. I don't know what happened because they're going up against three people. Um, it's this group with J Lo and A Rod. It's a guy named Steve Cohen who's a well known billionaire in New York. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the other uh, group is the group that owns the New Jersey Devils and the Philadelphia 76ers, I believe. Um, it's not Mike Rubin. It's it's somebody else that has like a stock in the Sixers somewhere. Okay. But apparently this group owns the Sixers and owns the uh, New Jersey Devils in hockey. So you got that group. Um, they're putting it back out for rebid. And I don't know if it's because the owners aren't happy with what they received. I don't know if it's... It's not enough money or it's not who they really want to actually win the bid because I do think that they have a preference on who they want Mm -hmm. to own the team. Um, And I I think, you know, my preference, A-Rod and J-Lo. Yeah, sure. For for me, it's those those guys. And the fact that Bradley Beal and these other athletes have a stake and investment in this as well makes me root for this group more to get this. I was talking about this. You remember when the Carolina Panthers was up for sale? Yeah. And I was talking about how the Currys should get involved, Michael Jordan, um, Steve Johnson, formerly a BT, and anybody, Steve Smith, and anybody in that Charlotte area, um, you know, would, you know, form a group of people to, you know, make this purchase happen. Um, this is exactly what, 
you know, happening here with J Lo and A Rod. And so, yeah. you know, I, I I'm with it. I hope they win. I hope they don't keep going back and forth on this, man. Just yo, just put the bid back out. And if and if J Lo and A Rod is who you want, then regardless of what the bid is, just get them. Just get them. Yeah, I don't think it's a one thing. I, I, you know, it's always business. They just try and get the most money they can get. Um, Of course. Yeah. So, I, I, like I said, I hope they got. I hope they are the winning bidders. Yep. Yeah. I I hope so too, man. Um. So I got an announcement, and you know, before you close the show out. Okay. So, so I will be a guest appearing on a podcast next Wednesday at seven o'clock Eastern time. Um, it is the sports podcast by a gentleman named Jelani Brown. Uh, the name of his podcast is called What the Game Means to Me, a sports podcast by Jelani Brown. So basically what I'm doing is I'm going to be talking some Ravens football along with other panel of guests from uh, who are fans of teams in the same division as the Ravens. So it's going to be like an AFC North kind of a smack talk kind of a thing going on. I think it's going to be on Facebook Live. Um, it's definitely going to be on the podcast live for certain. Um, they've already did the NFC East, AFC West. He's already had a few dates. I think he, I think they got the AFC East going on right now as we speak. So I'll post the schedule up on our social media so you guys could, you know, check me out. I'll make another announcement next Tuesday. Um, that I'll be on Wednesday, and I, I think this will be a great look for me. It'll be a great look for the podcast, and um, who knows? I, I, I might be able to, you know, get this brother on maybe for an interview with something to, you know, see what's, you know, going on with him. So, sure, sure. Uh, just want to just want to give that brother a shout out for inviting me on the podcast, and I look forward to uh, talking some smack with some of the other uh, people there on the panel. That's what's up. That's what's up. Hey, look, man, for Oh, well, first, let me say, make sure you follow us on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Follow me at Maestro Styles, Trey at Trey Frazier on Twitter. Follow me at Maestro Styles. You can follow Trey at Barbershop SPOR2. Uh, like our Facebook page and con- um, subscribe to our YouTube page. I want to thank everybody um, in the chat room. Shout out to all y'all. We appreciate y'all. Shout out to anybody um, who's going to listen on demand. We appreciate y'all. Keep, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Uh, for Trey Frazier, man, this is Maestro Styles. We see you next week. Peace.